Yeah, let's um, talk about that for a second. So two things, two questions about that that that, that are that come along with what you've yeah. already laid out. The first question is, how is the inflation rate calculated? That's mysterious, right? Because yeah, it relies that's on it. the consumer price index. That's another big part of the fraud. Because certainly in America, and I know a lot more about the US CPI, let's say, than I do about CPIs in other countries, but my assumption is that you know the politicians are being dishonest everywhere. Because you know the inflation rate, it's like a report card. And if our kids were responsible for grading their own report cards, it wouldn't be as shocker if they came home with all A's, right? So that this is the problem that we've hired the government to grade its own, you know, its its own pro its success, you know, in, in the economy because high inflation would would be would be bad. Um, so the government, again, when they're measuring inflation and they're looking at prices, they're looking at an effect. They're not looking at the thing itself. But over the years, governments have changed the methodology for measuring price increases. So the CPI that we use today is nothing like the one that we used, say, in the 1970s. We're expecting inflation to come down. It's kind of a foregone conclusion. Does the Fed care about today's numbers? Uh, not so much, because there's another CPI report coming up by uh, the end, by the time they get uh, to their next meeting on June 14th. We also get a PCE index uh, inflation report before that as well. But we are expecting some news today that might disappoint the markets who do react to everything right away. And that's because inflation is forecast to come in uh, basically unchanged on the month. We're going to see no change at all in the headline number. Uh, we've got some uh, energy price issues there. And then the core, uh, just over the last 24 hours, has been revised up to a four-tenths uh, change for the month, which keeps the uh, month over month uh, only a tenth lower. So we're still well above the level that uh, the Fed is looking for, of course, that 2 percent target. Yes, and so that, to the point, Mike, about whether the Fed cares, I mean, you mentioned that there's more data to come, so they'll get another chance to sort of look at the inflation picture before they have to make any more decisions about rates. But also, as Ven Rahm on the Markets Live blog points out to me this morning, we've had nine months of headlines slowing. So I suppose they take comfort from that trend, almost regardless of what today's data shows. Is that is that the feeling? Well, that is the feeling. And they knew that this would be, as they put it, uh, kind of volatile, that you would have months where things don't go exactly Exactly as they plan, but in general, inflation's coming down. Uh, the Cleveland Fed CPI now indicator has uh, always kind of forecast what's going to happen, and it does show a sort of flattening out of inflation over the last couple of months. Uh, looks like um, you know we're going to be stuck in the fives for a while. But what they're counting on is that we're finally going to see some rent reductions start to come through, maybe in the May numbers that we get uh, in June, and that will start us on the process down to the next level, which is closer to 4%. Mike, 30 seconds here. The rent levels you mentioned, the shelter costs. Why are the shelter costs decelerating faster, given that we are now entering or ending the rate tightening cycle? Shouldn't we see a bigger effect? Well, we saw the effect at the beginning of uh, this whole cycle because rents were going up a lot. And it takes a while, about a year, for the declines to start to get into the overall numbers. And we saw declines starting to come during the pandemic. And now they're uh, sort of flattening out to going up again. But we should see the declines that were a year ago in rents show up uh, fairly soon. Peter, interpret why you believe the Fed tightened rates 25 basis points this time. Well, because that's exactly what the market expected them to do. And that's what the Fed does, what the markets expect. But it's not going to do anything regarding bringing inflation down. You know, the elephant in the room with respect to inflation is the, the fiscal policy. It's the debt, not the ceiling, but the fact that we're running these massive deficits. And until the federal government reduces spending, these quarter point increases are going to be completely ineffective. And the problem is Powell refuses to call Congress out and mention that the driving force behind all the inflation that they've been creating is reckless government spending. And as long as the government keeps spending, inflation is going to get worse. And so is the current financial crisis. And nobody wants to admit we're in a financial crisis. It is worse than the one we had in 2008. It's just getting started. Ultimately, the Fed is going to cut, but it's going to cut as inflation is accelerating. 
Okay. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to update our best videos.